Welcome traders to the first earnings season preview for 2023 with me, Patrick Munnerly. Today, we are going to be looking at JP Morgan. But before we jump into the earnings preview, as always, want to adhere to that risk disclaimer. Uh, most pertinent to today's presentation is the fact that the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. So like I say, we are looking at JP Morgan, who are set to announce earnings today before the uh, open of trading in New York. Uh, we are looking for an earnings per share estimate of uh, $3.08, based on revenue of $34.35 billion. With gains of more than 20% over the past six months and 21% in the past three months, shares of JP Morgan have been one of the better performing stocks in the financial sector. Despite the backdrop of possible recession, the bank is being rewarded for several quarters of operating efficiency. Investors will want to know whether the bank can continue this momentum in the new year. While rate increases are beneficial to bank earnings, those events are not the only metrics investors are going to be watching. The fear of a possible recession is front and center in deciding to invest in risk assets, particularly as there is already evidence of an economic slowdown in several areas of the US economy. These topics will be answered when the company reports its fourth quarter fiscal 2022 earnings, as I said before the open of trading today. JP Morgan has shown that it can navigate these tough headwinds to return value to shareholders, producing strong third quarter results with revenue growing by 10% year over year. The bank capitalized on higher interest rates, resulting in a 17.5 billion of net interest income. With strong Q4 profitability guidance of 19 billion, the bank sees no signs of slowing down. At the current valuation of 139 per share, JP Morgan stock trades below uh, the average price target given by analysts. We'll take a look at that in a, uh, in a minute. For this perceived value to matter, the bank on Friday must deliver a top and bottom line along with some upbeat guidance. Let's take a look at some of the statistical trading patterns that we see around the JP Morgan earnings release. The shares of the stock have moved lower in the immediate aftermath of earnings, nine out of the 12 previous reports. On average, the stock moved down 1.8% in the first day after trading um, post its earnings release. Based on the previous 12 earnings releases, JP Morgan is more likely to trade lower one day after earnings for an average loss of 0.4%. On average, the stock has moved lower by 0.2% one week after earnings. As I say, the analyst perspective is important here, and data provided by uh, TradingView shows that the average estimate uh, for the next 12 months comes in at 149.42 for the stock. Uh, we're trading just shy of uh, of 140 at the close yesterday. The minimum expectation in terms of the 26 analysts covering the stock is 118, the maximum 189, and it's a strong buy on the street at the moment. So let's uh, review some sentiment and flow perspective in terms of uh, JP Morgan. Investor sentiment going into the earnings release today has 56.3% expecting earnings beat. There has been some notable options activity with just over 4,000 contracts trading at about 135 foot, which expires today. Options order flow sentiment in general has been bearish. The put to call ratio is currently 1.9, 35% of core buyers with 65% uh, puts trading. The predicted move post the earnings announcement is 3.1% versus an average of actual earnings move was about 2.5% in recent quarters. The options market has overestimated the JP Morgan stock earnings move 75% uh, of the time in the last 12 quarters. So let's take a look at the JP Morgan chart now and see if we can identify any near-term trading opportunities based upon the technical setup. So from a technical perspective, last time, last earnings release, we were looking for a break of this descending wedge pattern to the upside. Our target on a move through that 107 level was a test of the uh, 133 uh, 
level, which was our prior wave, wave four high, that traded two targets, and we have since exceeded that, moving up to the uh, 138.80s before a three-wave corrective pullback. We're now in a potential uh, fifth wave extension to the upside. A couple of levels I'm only paying attention to uh, as uh, post-earnings announcement. Any pullbacks into the trend channel support here, 136, 135, we're watching for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side. I'm targeting a move ultimately to test the 144 level, which is the value area high here uh, versus the uh, 12 month look back in terms of uh, in terms of the volume traded. So um, if we don't find support at the 135, 136 level, any pullbacks into the 134, I'll also be paying attention to how price responds there. Again, bullish reversal patterns, looking to engage on the long side, same upside objective into that 144, 145. However, if uh, if we don't find decent support there, we could see a pullback into the uh, high volume node and monthly projected range support back down towards the 131 level. Once again, I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side, looking for that upside objective 144, 145. At this stage, it would take a loss of the 128.70 support zone to suggest more significant uh, bearish price action uh, could be uh, in play. At that stage, if you get a close back through that 128 handle, I'd be looking for a deeper corrective pullback into test support to that uh, 115, 118 area. That 118 obviously being that minimum downside objective from uh, the analyst community. Again, from there, I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns as I am uh, constructive on JP Morgan uh, over the longer term horizon. And I'd ultimately uh, be looking for opportunities to engage on the long side at this juncture. So key levels for today are gonna to be that 136, 135, uh, if we don't find support there, then looking at 133 and below there, 131. Like I say, only really getting meaningfully bearish on a break of 128. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.